Thank you, Chairman, sir. While when we speak about the resurgence of Indian economy, it is important for us to reflect on India's historical economic uh, stature and see in that trend, in that over centuries, how India has become, how over decades India has become stronger. Today, we are certainly celebrating as the fifth largest economy. This is a great achievement for the country. We have been able to, from the 10th position in 2014, in a manner of few years, we have reached the fifth largest economy position today. And a report yesterday by the SNP, it states how India is going to be the third largest economy by 2030. So by the time Honorable Prime Minister completes his term in 2099 and gets ready for his fourth term, India would have become the third largest economy in the world. And if you go back a few centuries ago, in ancient India, in, we were the largest economy of the world. We were known as the golden bird, Soneki Chidya, until 5th century AD. This remained India's position in the global, in, in the global scenario. But a thousand years of rule by invaders, by foreign rulers, has robbed India not only of its rich wealth, it also robbed India of its uh, confidence. So when Honorable Prime Minister took over as, as the Prime Minister of the country, he has given a complete new direction to India's economy. He has instilled confidence in, in India's growth story. And, and Amrit Kal has truly begun. We are certainly passing through this Amrit Kal. And Atmanirbhar Bharat is the, is the strategy for achieving India's, India's uh, preeminent position in the global economy. And I would like to tell our friends from the, across the treasury benches, the opposition benches, I'd like them to know. In 2014, in 2004, when UPA came to power, India was the 12th largest economy. They were in power for five years until 2009. India moved from the 12th to the 11th rank. And they remained in power for another five years. In those five years, they could take India from the 11th to only 10th rank. But look at the geometric growth experience during the rule of the Honorable Prime Minister. India, you are, I think you have blamed it as Hindu rate of growth. You have used governments of the Congress rule, con Congress uh, denomination in the early decades of early years of independence, have used this term Hindu growth, Hindu rate of growth to deride Hindu religion. But during 10 years of your rule, what have you done to Indian economy? You have not been able to, you claim to have given great growth during the years of Manmohan Singh regime, but all that India could move was from the 12th rank to the 11th rank, going on to 10th rank. But Prime Minister Modi ji, in a manner of nine years, he has taken India to the fifth rank, and in a manner of years, by the term of, by the completion of his next term, we are going to be the third largest economy in the world. This is certainly a huge achievement for the country, and uh, that is what is, is giving the BJP and Honorable Prime Minister and his leadership a huge uh, 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 fillip in India's elections. So, inflation. Our friends, I have, I have busted their theory of growth. We gave growth. We were high growth, we gave a high growth economy and I told them how India's remain position remained globally at the same, almost at the same level through 10 years of UPA. And let me now bust their inflation claims. During the first five years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, the average inflation rate in India 
was only 4.4 percent, well below the RBI ordained level, which is range between 4 to 6 percent. Look at the Congress Party's performance. Look at the UPA performance. What was the inflation levels in the UPA rule? In in, uh, in four years, between 2004 and 2014, inflation levels were well below 10%. Double-digit inflation, what UPA has given this country. It was 13.9% in 2009 and 10. And under Prime Minister Modi ji, at a time when the world is experiencing one of the highest levels of Inflation, India has been able to contain inflation well below the, even the RBI levels. Let me give you some numbers. The U.S., the U.S. inflation level is above 7%. Let me give you the exact number. Seven, UK, U.S. experienced over 7%, highest inflation of, in, in 40 years. UK has experience, is experiencing one of the highest inflations in the last 30 years. It is currently 7.9%. It was in June 2023, which is the 40, which is a high after 41 years. Europe is also struggling with inflation. Germany, which is Europe's large, largest economy, also has one of the highest inflation levels. It is only India. It is only India which has not only maintained high growth during the post-COVID period, it has also maintained very, very low, low to moderate levels of inflation. So the friends from the Congress who claim there is high inflation must look back because any comparisons that you do, any comparison of any performance, you have to do over time. You have to do spatially. And you have to do cross-sectionally and time series uh, performance we clearly tells us how Congress governments have given only inflation and not a real growth. Let me give some more numbers. One of the highest levels of inflation in India's post-independent India were 19.3% in 91-92 under a Congress leadership, 95-96. 12.8% and under Srimati Indira Gandhi, it even touched double digit, it, it, touched, it crossed even 30% for two years. So this is the Congress story. So every time Congress comes to power, they bring inflation along and it is only the BJP-led governments, the NDA governments under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, which have given a relief to the common man. Jab Congress aati hai, I think this would be a nice slogan that would go along with them because in Karnataka, where they came to power only in uh, early this year, in May, in May this year, soon after they came to power, they hiked milk prices by three rupees per liter. They, they hiked electricity charges, though, though through, a, through a very indirect mechanism by increasing uh, purchase fuel and power purchase cost. Uh, uh, elements in this. They have increased every commodity that a common man needs for his survival. So the Congress party's only guarantee is to mehang is Mahangai guarantee, is inflation guarantee and nothing else. So if you look at our performance, India's GDP growth for the last year was 7.2%, the fastest growing economy of all the major economies in the world. And this has been possible. This high growth trajectory has become possible because of a measured response, because of a judicious economic policies that the government pursued, mainly during the COVID and post-COVID era. And friends from the opposition, all of them claim that India's, India's economy can only be revived by putting money directly into the hands of the people, by giving helicopter money, 
but that kind of uh, any country, all countries that have followed that prescription have actually failed. And these are the countries which are experiencing one of the highest inflation levels in half a century. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's economic vision and economic policy is today being hailed as the best in the entire world. Let me, what has made this kind of economic transformation, this kind of a turnaround possible? Let me give a few illustrations. Let me cite a few cases. One, the Atma Nirbhara vision. I think COVID, which is a challenging period for the entire globe, was used to, to unveil a new economic vision that was Atma Nirbhara Bharat vision that has actually helped India transform its economy. Also, our governance principle, Prime Minister's governance principle of Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas actually translated into money reaching to the most needy people and ensuring that they suffer, they do not suffer the hardships of the COVID period and they are able to lead a very happy and a healthy life. Second, a digital revolution. I think the whole world is overawed by the success of Indian economic uh, uh, digital revolution. Today, in October 2023, we have touched an all-time high of 11.4 billion UPI transactions, crossing even 10 billion transactions that we got successively for the three months. And this resulted in a digital transaction of over 17.16 lakh crore. So this certainly was a contributor. It transformed Indian economy into a cash-based economy, into a, a digital economy. Clearing the banking mess, because what the UPA left, with, uh, uh, left for, for Narendra Modi ji was uh, a banking sector in complete mess. This government has not only cleaned up the banking sector, it has actually infused dynamism into the sector. Today, the Indian banking sector is one of the best performing banking sectors anywhere in the world. While many banks, even central banks, have experienced difficulties abroad, Indian economy, Indian banking sector is, is going through its best periods. Gross NPAs and net NPAs are at their decadal lows. And public sector banks have, have their, their resources have now been used for, the, for acting as pillars of Jen Kalyan. In fact, public sector banks have recorded profits of over 1 lakh crore in the last financial year, and that money has been plowed into financing the, the welfare of the poor. Also, we have seen how a transparent regime like the GST, which is a huge contribution of Honorable Prime Minister. GST collections are at, the, at their highest levels. 1.72 lakh crore was the GST collection in October 2023. This is the second highest ever. A few months ago, a year ago, 1 lakh crore also was considered to be a very important milestone to be achieved. And today, we have crossed 1.73 lakh crore. This clearly shows the buoyancy in the Indian economy. It shows the resurgence in the Indian economy. And anyone who disputes it can only get uh, uh, their validation in these numbers. There is also a surge, surge in direct, direct tax income, direct tax revenues. The direct tax revenues are 10.6 lakh crore till, till 9th November as against 10.6 lakh crore previous year during the same period, which has registered a near 22% healthy growth. This clearly shows even the net growth in corporate income tax collections shows a 12%, 12.5% rise. So there is a resurgence in the Indian economy across all the sectors. The investments, both the private investment and the foreign direct investment have shown a big improvement. The foreign direct investment please, during the UPA please conclude, 10 years, uh, during the UPA 10 years was $304 billion, which has more than doubled to $628 billion so far. This is an please increase conclude. of more than 
100%. So with this kind of a performance, the country is poised to achieve its economic please, goals please and conclude. very please. soon to become third largest economy in the world and going back to achieving India's ancient glory under Prime Great. Minister Narendra Thank Modi you. ji. Yehi Modi ji ki guarantee Great. hai. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.